Hey everyone, welcome back to another SAT math problem. So this one is a pretty interesting one. It's more like reading comprehension than anything. But yeah, let's get right into it. So it says for an electric field passing through a flat surface perpendicular to it, the electric flux of the ele electric field through the surface is the product of the electric field strength and the area of the surface. So it says a certain flat surface consists of two adjacent squares, which I've uh, drawn down here. Uh, it says in meters of the larger square is three times the side length in meters of the smaller square. So we have represented this by x for the smaller square and then just 3x uh, for the side lengths of the larger square. So it says a electric field with a strength of 29 volts per meter passes uniformly through the surface, which is perpendicular to the electric field. If the total electric flux of the electric field through the surface is 4,640 volts times meters, was electric flux in volts times meters of the electric field through just the larger square. Okay, so that's a lot of information there, but essentially it boils down to electric field times area equals the flux. All right. And you can see that they've given us the electric field strength, which they say is 29 volts per meter. So 29 is going to be our electric field strength. And now the thing with the area is we don't know what the area is. But we can solve for the area because they've given us the total flux that affects both the small and large square. So the total flux is 4,640 volts times meters. Right? So what we can do here is just a simple calculation to find area of the total area. So here we can just have area, and this will be 4,640 divided by 29. So the area would be 160, I guess, meters squared. All right. So there we have it. We have the total area of the adjacent squares, but we want to find just the area of the large square, because if we do that, we can multiply that by the field strength in order to get the flux that it's affected by. So here's what's going to look like. So we have the total area here, and we already have variables for the side lengths, right? So in reality here, we can just set 160 equal to, let's see, we have the first square to find the area is just length times width, right? So we have x times x. So we get x times x, and we add this to the other square, which is 3x times 3x. So you have 3x times 3x. And what we get here is x squared plus 9x squared. So those are like terms, right? So x squared plus 9x squared, that's just going to give us 100, sorry, that's going to give us 10x squared. So now we have 10x squared equals 160, right? So we can divide both sides by 10. We get 16 equals x squared. And then we can just take the square root. Square root of 16 equals x squared. Square root of x squared. And we're going to take the principal square root. So that's just going to be a positive 4 equals x. So we found the value of x. And that's helpful because now... Let's bring this up. We can just plug in uh, x. We can plug in a value of 4 for x for the side length. So up here we have 3x. So now we can just have 3 times 4. So we know the side length is 12. So 12 times 12. So we're now we're finding the area of the larger square. So the total area there is 144 meters squared. So now we have the total area of this larger square, right? And so now that we have the area, we know that because of this relationship up here, it told us, that the total electric flux is going to be the product of the field strength, which we already know is a constant 29, because that's volts per meter, right, times the area of the surface, right? So all we can do here is just very simply 29 times 144. And 29 times 144 will give us a final value of 4,176 volts times meters, as our final answer. So there we go. And yeah, hope you guys learned something and thank you for watching.